Wilson Morales from Black Women TV talking to Chris Chalk regarding his world, Paul Drake season two of Perry Mason. How's it going? Doing well, brother. How you feeling? Good. You know, obviously, uh, Paul has had different careers in the time we've seen him so far from police, ex-police officer, ex-PI, now surveillance officer in a way. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. what are we getting from Paul Drake this season that's different from last season? Oh, well, I think you'll get to see as Paul discovers who he really is behind all that masking that he did in the first season, we're all going to meet Paul at the same time. I think there's, we're going to meet the real dude behind all of that, you know, posture and stillness and performance of safety because he suddenly isn't safe anymore. He's lost all of that protection. He's lost all of that pretense and he's hungry. And what is it like when, where do, where do the performances go when a person is starving and he's starving for peace, he's starving for better food, he's starving for balance, he's starving for sex with his wife, you know, in that tiny space squeezed in that house with those loud kids and that annoying brother-in-law whom he loves, but, you know, he's really hungry right now. So we get to watch Paul fall apart and reconstruct himself. If he ever gets to the reconstruction jobs, yeah. So he always seems conflicted, like he's never happy, you know, and, th and that's how they set him up to be, which, which is for you as an actor, you've got to have all of these uh, facial expressions, like, what did I do? Am I doing the right thing? You know, as opposed to like, listen, I got to do what I got to do to feed my kids, you know, and, and not have a conscience. But he does have a conscience, you know, which yeah. we'll see, I think, throughout the season. Right. <laughs> yeah, we'll see that. I mean, it's like a little kid, he's touching a lot of fire and he's finding out what burns too much and what doesn't melt his skin, you know? And I think he sits really close to a lot of fires he thought he'd never sit close to in his lifetime, you know? He's, he's a bit of a pretentious guy in the first season because he was a safe guy, he was a safe Negro. And now that he's not as safe, but still dealing with the same incredibly powerful white people, you'll find this season, it's like, you know, forget local police, let's go big, you know? So. We, we get to see what happens as Paul drowns a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, throughout the two years that we've been waiting, <laughs> you know, did anything change in terms of how the structure of the show is going to be? You know, a lot of time goes by. You, you never know if, you know, the writers want to go on a different angle, depending on the time period that we're in right now to see whether or not this is going to sell. You know, in these two years, We've had a glut of programming, you know, left and right between now that, you know, the, the streaming world has exploded with a lot of new shows. So it's like, what's going to take for people to watch it? Can you watch this season without having to go back to the first season? Or do you have to play catch up? Can you watch this? Is this a standalone possibility? I think so. I think so. I think it's like. Not that the show is simple, but it's a slower paced thing than, you know, we, we watch a lot of stuff and they put so much plot in one episode that it's like, ah, oh, shit, I got to go back. I got to rewind. I got to go back. I don't I think with this, because they did such a good job just to start with that answer, I think you could. I don't know why you wouldn't just go back and watch the first season. It's eight hours. I think you could do it. I believe in you. I trust you. You've got the time. But say you don't, why not start second season and go back to the first? You'll still get the idea. You just will be kind of going backwards to go forward. And the first question, oh shit, I forgot. Um, what was the in first? Of, <clears throat> well, in terms of like, you know, like having to go back to just to get an idea, like, let me just rephrase it in a way. Like <clears throat> for those who are newcomers now, you know, because oh, like, oh, like I said, it's been two seasons. It's gonna be two yep. years, you know, and we've had, too much, you know, a lot of program in between that, whether it be on HBO or other, other networks, you know, for anybody who's just now catching up. And sometimes when you get a first season of a show, it's all about introducing characters, yeah. you know, and people don't know if they want to stay invested because, you know, some shows don't make it past one season. Now that yeah. we know there's a season two, that's stability. You know, now that we know it's like, okay, you know, sometimes you hate to invest eight hours, even though it's short, and then it, it not go anywhere. But now we have a season two that tells me, OK, you know, they believe in the show. They believe in his characters. Let me start watching it. But, and for those who are new to watching Perry Mason, are they going to find a difference, especially for older folk who remember the original Perry Mason? Mm -hmm. You know, they know the characters of Perry Mason, Paul Drake and Della Street. 
You know, are they going to find similarities or is this something totally new or reimagined? I think that what uh, Rollin and Ron started with, that was our original showrunners, Rollin, Ron and Tim, they started with was giving an older audience of people who are not older in age, but older, meaning they know the show, uh, a more familiar audience, just enough of what they have seen. But obviously, no, they can't have what they used to have. Absolutely not. What they used to have was racist. Stop it. Like what they used to have was like white men talking and sometimes the woman would talk. No, that was inappropriate to begin with. So one, come along with 2020 and wake up and realize there were huge populations of people of color, black people, brown people, Asian people. Everybody was here and those shows just weren't showing it at the time. And that's one thing that our show is offering is a, a more full view of L.A. during the 1930s, uh, adding some reality in the in the in the imaginative imagination of these these uh crimes but there's now more of a inclusive nature about it i would go back and watch the first season because it is nice to see from where everybody came and how everybody started and i think it's cool to know you know that first episode of perry and war it's good to know where people are coming from to see where they're going watch it in whatever order you want but I think it gives a more interesting, a little bit darker, a, a lot less episodic and procedural and a lot more character driven TV. So, yeah, I'd, I'd go back to the first season and I would. You know, if I'm not racist, I'd be cool with adding uh, this um, this immense amount of diversity, immense mm -hmm. good amount of diversity. <laughs> you know, this <clears throat> recent episode, episode two, obviously we see Paul conflicted because obviously he sees what happened to Perkins, somebody that he thought he was just doing a simple job, but then it turns out, you know, uh, he was being somewhat used, you know, because we now see like, oh, you know, what, what transpires from there? You know, he now has to be careful as to every job he takes, you know, even if he has to go back, you know, it's like, he, he can't just have a simple job, even though he's trying to feed his kids, nothing's ever simple for him. Yeah, nothing's, ever, I mean, but ain't that the truth? You mean that that's something I do think the writers really honored is like as privileged as Paul is to have this white access to this white side of town. It ain't safe. It's never easy. It's still he's still working 10 times harder than everyone else to barely be seen and acknowledged to still be bullied, to still be kind of disregarded. And what we have this season is a man getting tired of that, you know, you know, because betraying one's community, which I think is if in, in in Paul's moral standing, that's one of the things we don't do. You know, you, you can get support wherever you want, but you don't betray us. I think you'll go back. People who have seen the first season when Paul went to arrest the older couple, he was like, I'm not going to arrest you. Just put the gun down. Come on, y'all. Stop. Stop before they come. If they come, there's a problem. If I'm here, you're safe. And that's how I, I Paul, treated our community is I'm here to protect us from them because I'm wearing the same costume, but I only have so much power. Now that none of that's there, man, whoo, Paul's gonna get his ass kicked. <laughs> you know, you've worked uh, a long period of time, whether it's film or, or other TV projects. For you as an actor, you know, when you do this show, with different directors, different writers, what would you say has evolved from your skill set as an actor? Mm. Ease, I think what I'll tell you exactly. First season. Oh, I'm going to tell you this. Yeah, why not? Uh, when I saw the first season, I was okay with what I, Chris Chalk, did. But if we're talking about purely skill set, I could have worked up better on breath, which might, which might not make sense. But I think there were times when I was holding my breath because Paul was scared where I wish he to breathe because there's more life in that. It's a little nerdy. This answer is very, very nerdy. But there's a certain amount of ease that I think, especially after episode two, that we consciously was try were trying to bring to Paul so that in his fall apart, there's no control. There is, there's ease, but it's more of a, like a little baby going, oh, God, I got to just get out of here. Fight, fight, fight. Whereas before, it's almost like he was always in a stance ready to fight. Here, he just doesn't know where the attack is coming from. So there's something about his head on a swivel more so and a little less stiff and a little more freedom. And it's taught me Chris Chalk something 
but it also just kind of opens Paul up to a better exploration. And therefore every character after Paul will have kind of more relaxed presence, even in their fiery tense moments. I definitely watched that first season and went, ah, got things to fix, got stuff to work on. <laughs> well, we've got more episodes to go. Obviously, I like the fact that it's weekly. That way we can anticipate and look forward to see what's going to happen with this That's character. No. So congrats again, you know, I'll keep it going. You know, I've always followed you and supported you. So it's always good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, Wilson. I look forward to the next one. All right, take care. <laughs>